Hey class, it's Bill Berry with a video upon request of how to draw an EER using MySQL. There were a couple of little tricks and as we talked about them in class, some of you said, well, it'd be nice if we could have a video so that we could see those tricks done again. So let's do that. Let's spend a little time drawing an EER in MySQL. So what we'll do is we will start from a defined set of tables. In class, we took some artifacts from a client and we broke them apart and figured out what tables we have. Well, I'm not covering covering that here, so go back and look at the week uh, materials and the modules and you can see how we broke those out. I uh, can't really capture all the discussion that we had, but at least you see the final results. So we're going to start from that. We also have understood the primary and foreign keys for each table. We had an understanding of that as well. And the relationships. We'll remind ourselves of that before we move forward. Once we have that, <clears throat> we're going to start working on the EER and we're going to place the tables starting with the key tables that are less dependent on the others. We're going to add their primary keys and then we're going to let MySQL do some of the work of creating the linking tables and marking the relationships and things like that. Then we will flesh out the columns so that we have everything that we need in there and then we'll even do a little extra thing of putting on some little colored layers so that we can group things together visually. So really that's quite a lot that we'll be able to cover and hopefully do it in a very a few minutes. So first let's remind ourselves of where we were in the discussion and what tables we had for this parent teacher student association. We had a set of members, right? So we, we uh, whittled this down to just this little member table and then we had several other things uh, handled. So one was committees. So we have a list here. We have a committee table that has a list of the committees and an ID for each one. We decided that we would have an auto increment integer ID. We didn't have to, but we decided that. And then we have a linking table here, committee member, which this de describes what committee and what member joined the committee on that date. So this is a linking table between committee and member. We did a similar thing with dues where we started out by creating a dues table figuring out that on a certain year a certain amount of dues were owed so that we can remember that. And then we have a linking table between member and the dues table that says uh, what member owed what dues year. So that's a link to here. And then what the member ID was there. Now, so, sorry, this is this is the year which links to here, this is the member number which links to the members, and then we decided on having our own auto increment integer primary key here, partly because if we don't, this table gets more complicated. So that's that was a decision that we made, and, and then the dues payments refers to the member dues entry. So this ID here, uh, you can make multiple payments. So we see here, uh, this person paid their whole dues at once, but this one, um, the member dues 2, which was member number 2 for 2015, paid it in two payments. So here's a $10 payment and here's a $5 payment on two different dates. So that was the table for dues and then we ended up with the offices. So we have the president, vice president, etc. We decided on an integer auto increment ID for that as well. And then we have a linking table that has which office was held by which member for which year. So if we think about it, let's let's put a little mark on all the linking tables so that we can understand clearly what was going on there. We have several many-to-many -many relationships here, and then we also have a one-to-many relationship here where one member due line here corresponds potentially to multiple payments here. So we have a one-to-many. Now, the other thing we did is we marked all the primary keys. They're in bold, a little hard to see here, but mostly they are auto increment integer kind of IDs, except in dues we just let the year stand for itself because that was fine. And then over here for the dues payment, because this is a one-to-many relationship, uh, we c the, this number here, the member dues line is not enough. We also included the date because we said on a given date, we don't think a member is going to ever make more than one payment or we, we would lump them together anyway, so we wouldn't consider it two. So we use that because remember primary keys have to be unique. So that's a little description of what tables we have. They're named in a way that helps. If you see committee member, that helps you to understand that that's a linking table between committee and member. Uh, the only other thing we should have done here is instead of calling this just dues payment, we probably ought to call it member 
dues payment because it really is linked to this table, but it's really not a linking table to here or something like that. So that's kind of the basis for understanding where we need to go with this. And now we want to go and start making our EER. So let's get started with that and let's do the very basics. And then uh, we will probably cut this video and make a second one so it doesn't get too long. So let's move over to MySQL and then let's look here and see that you don't even have to be connected to the local instance to work with models. That's what we're going to do today. You can add a model, open an existing model, or do some other fun stuff. We're going to add a model. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to click the plus. It starts doing all of that. I'm going to clean up my UI by getting rid of the panel on the left and the panel on the right to make it simpler. And I'm going to do add diagram because I'm doing all of this from the diagram side. In fact, now I have to go clean that stuff up again. So I'm going to make a diagram starting from this point. Now, one thing that I want to do maybe right away is from the beginning, instead of calling it my DB, I want to add something. I want to edit it and actually give it a better name because this is the PTSA model. So I'm going to just do that. And then I'm going to save that. I'm going to close that little window. And I'm going to come back to my EER. Now, the, one of the first things I'm also going to do is to save it. I'm compulsive about saving my work. I don't want to lose this. So I'm going to say File. And I'm going to say Save Model As. I'm going to put it on the desktop. And I'm going to call it uh, PTSA. There we go. Very good. All right, so that is now saved and we are ready to go. Now, uh, the other thing that you might want to notice is depending on your screen resolution and size, here's all your palette of tools, but some of them don't fit. There's more that come down here and to get to those, you need to click this little guy and then more will pop out and you can choose from those. So that's important to know. Uh, the other thing to know is uh, this UI has a couple of quirks. Let me just start by throwing in one table. Uh, the, this is the, the little icon you'll want to click to place a new table and notice you click it and then you just click over here. You don't draw, you just click. One of the things that you'll notice right away is that if you double click a table to edit it, you may get into a situation that looks like this, where you have some UI that's in the way, but the thing you want is actually not even present. This is the magic divider here that you need to have. You need to be able to bring that up, and that will let you get to the column definitions here. And we would like to get rid of some of this stuff in the bottom, but uh, you know that'll that'll be okay, and we'll we'll work with it. But that's an important thing to know. And then you can close that tab to get back to the diagram. So this is a quick introduction to getting in, uh, naming your model. Uh, saving your model into an MWB file. That's all just sort of setup stuff that we need to know uh, to get in and work with what we have. So I think I'm going to stop here and then we'll continue in a second video that gets into actually working on our particular EER and I think that will be a good place to stop. So keep watching. Thanks for watching this one.